Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. This is the first, and this is an abbreviated um, version of my journey to Islam. And my journey begins when I was around 12 years old with a question that popped in my head that would change the trajectory of my life forever. The question that popped in my head was, what happens if I die right now? So after that question just popped into my head out of nowhere, I began a search for the answer to that question. Now to begin that search, I began that search by reading the Bible. So coming from a Western Christian country or Western country with a historically Christian background, my first place to turn to that was the Bible. So I would go on to read the Bible from cover to cover, taking extensive notes, writing everything that said about God, everything that says you have to do, everything that says you can't do, everything that says will happen about life after death, how you get there, et cetera, et cetera. So after taking these notes, I went on to attempt to find a religion that matched the Bible. Now I was searching in the pre-internet days. So I was searching using almanacs, encyclopedias, bookstores, libraries, whatever I could get my hands on, which was not much. Um, so at that time, I could not find a religion that I felt um, reflected the teachings of the Bible. Uh, so what I ended up doing was I decided to practice the Bible on my own. But I also thought about other religious traditions. So I went on to study East Asian religious traditions, South Asian religious traditions. I went on to read uh, the Quran, um, a Penguin Classics translation. Uh, I read a biography of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May God raise his rank and grant him peace. Um, and at that time, you know, I was still in a search. Around 1993 or 1994, a television show came on. The show was called Unsolved Mysteries. And they had an episode where they were examining the alleged um, miracle at Fatima or the alleged um, visitation of the Virgin Mary to um, some children who made, made some predictions and miracles. So after watching that show, I had felt that, you know, this miracle had happened and then this miracle must be proof that God is true and the Catholic religion is true. Uh, now, granted, they did not do a great job at representing the skeptical sides, like the sides of uh, Joe Nickel, etc. Um, so I could only go by at that time what I was exposed to. Um, so I chose to become Catholic and practice the rules of the Bible. However, at the same time, I had to stop reading the Bible because I could not believe in the doctrine of the Trinity um, based upon reading the Bible. You know, so after my reading of the Bible, I did not, I could not believe in Trinity. I believe that the Bible did not teach Trinity. And I believe that you have to already come to the Bible with a belief in the Trinity before reading it. You won't get that from reading the Bible. So I stopped reading the Bible and I started practicing Catholicism. And I was very hardcore in my practice of Catholicism. Like I literally tried to follow all the rules if possible. I mean, and I was also giving up time to go visit sick people in the hospital. Uh, so I, I took it very seriously. I was not a nominal Catholic. Um, after some time, though, I realized, without reading the scripture, I realized that my heart started to die. Um, now, not the physical heart, the spiritual heart. And one day, another question popped in my head. So the initial question that got this rolling is, what happens if I die right now? This new question was, will God accept my deeds? And the reason I was asking is, the preface to the question is, I'm doing all of these works solely because I want to go to heaven and solely because I don't want to go to hell. But I was asking the question, if I do, if I'm doing deeds, not out of love for God, but just to get heaven and avoid hell, will God accept my deeds? So after this question, I literally go to church that same week and the priest gives a sermon on how that if your deeds are not done, 
out of love for God, God does not accept your deeds. So after that sermon, that set me on a new trajectory. Because in my head, I said, if I'm going to hell, I might as well do whatever I want. Because if God's not going to accept my deeds, I'm going to end up in hell. I might as well do it, have all the fun now, do whatever I want, and just you know deal with it in the hereafter. So I went in that route. But after a while, I kind of had that what if. So I had one foot in the door, one foot out the door. So I would be doing whatever I want, but then I would also be going to church. Um, I also started getting back into comparative religions uh, as well, because I had a passion for comparative religions. And, you know, I academically, I excelled in that, you know, more than any other area. And it's not that I didn't excel in certain areas um, academically, but in comparative religions, I mean, I remember I took a college course at one point and didn't get one question wrong on any test on anything throughout the whole semester. Like I was really into it. Um, so during one of the classes I decided to take, I took a class um, on Islam again, Islamic civilization. And during that, we had a guest speaker. His name was Ramazan Zuberi. And Ramazan Zuberi did a talk um, called Islam from the Bible, where he's teaching people Islam using um, Arabic, Aramaic, Hebrew, using the Quran, the Old Testament, and the New Testament. And he made some claims. And during that, I realized that I have no access to these earlier languages. I can't prove or disprove anything he is saying. So I went on a path to try to disprove, um, prove or disprove, you know, what, but more disprove what Mr. Zuberi was trying to say. During that time, um, I, you know, did not say have access to all the notes that I had took, take, taken regarding the Bible when I was younger. Um, and I began reading some of the works at that time of Jamal Bedoui, of I.A. Ibrahim, um, et cetera, some of the Muslim uh, Dawa works at that time. And I started to be convinced of the argumentation at the time. And during that time, but I wasn't quite sure, but yet people said, you know, um, I was, so I was, once again, I was halfway in, so I'd be going to the church, I'd be going to the mosque, I'd be praying Catholic prayers, I'd be praying Muslim prayers, I'd be partying, I'd be, do, I was doing, like, I was trying to cover all my bases at that time, just in case. And at that time, someone had talked me into taking my Shahada, uh, but I wasn't ready yet. But it was kind of more of a peer pre uh, positive peer pressure, not like a negative peer pressure thing. So I did it. And then I was, you know, involved in, you know, giving the dawah after, um, inviting people to Islam. But one of the things is when people started asking me questions, I realized it wasn't authentic. I was parry, um, parroting the thoughts of others. So I said, you know what, let me apply the same level of criticism towards the claims of the books I, I read, like Jamal Bedoui, uh, I Ibrahim, et cetera, Ahmed Didat. Um, let me apply the same methodology towards those books that I applied towards the other religious traditions. And during this process, you know, there was a story in the Quran that really had totally stripped my faith in that time. Because I, I realized that every claim that I saw by Badui Ibrahim, I could make a counterclaim that was equal or stronger. And so I kind of end up, you know, um, taking a Yumian approach, like Yumian after David Hume, of like can you know, each one canceling each other out. You know, it's like positive, negative numbers in math. You know, if you have positive five, negative five, they cancel each other out to zero. And that's how I felt that the logical approach towards faith was. And the nail of the coffin at that time, there was a story of the Quran that said it totally, you know, really stripped my faith. Um, so I ended up with nothing again. I ended up with nothing again. And so then there was a new question that guided my life, right? So it's another traje question, um, trajectory. And this question is, what is the path of human happiness? 
So in order to find out what the path of human happiness was, I went on an experimental phase, which was opposite than my logical phase, you know, where everything was based upon, uh, you know, logic, math, does, you know, does it add up? Um, when I felt that nothing could purely add up 100% in my head, I went, you know, went towards a lot, focusing on life experience. So after the experiment, I tried out everything basically I could from, you know, Islam to Protestantism to uh, New Age to Buddhism to partying to, you know, um, agnosticism, etc., atheism. After trying out all these things, I became convinced that Islam is the path towards human happiness. And, and afterwards, as a result, I developed something called the 40-day Islamic challenge, um, which I use in order to determine, you know, the truth of Islam for me and also let others, the 40-day Islamic challenge allows others to, to try the Islamic lifestyle out to see if they have the same results, um, experimenting um, for themselves. So I accepted Islam for myself. But after accepting Islam, in order to relieve the conflicts internally, um, as well as navigate through all the contradicting um, Muslim narratives that I was exposed to, or Islamic narratives, narratives about Islam, I devoted my myself to learning usul al-fiqh, comparative fiqh. Now, fiqh is, for lack of a better translation, it really means deep understanding, but we're referring to the legal theory or the laws. Um, epistemology, I, I devote myself to learning usul fiqh, comparative fiqh, epistemology, history, and historical methods. In addition to my graduate degrees in physics and education, I would go on to author books on Islam that have been translated into more than one language. And recently, out of recommendations from others, I developed uh, a YouTube channel called Experience Islam with the Farus. So thank you for listening to my abbreviated story. I hope it was beneficial to all of you. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. And